Hey everyone, today we're going to look at Docker on a Synology NAS and the goal of this video is to get you to be able to understand Docker to the point that you can create any container you'd like on your Synology NAS. So we're going to run through most of the process and some of it is a little complex. So I have written instructions in the description of the video and for the more complex portions I have uh, all of that documented there but for everything else it's really just explanation based so you kind of have to use both. So I'm not going to go too deep into this, but one of the reasons why you'd want to use Docker is because it virtualizes everything into separate containers. So rather than specifying specific CPU and RAM requirements like you would on a virtual machine, Docker uses your system resources and it spreads them across all of your containers. So everything's running at a much smaller footprint than you would run in a virtual machine. So Docker is fairly complex and I'm not going to get too deep into it because there's tons of documentation you can read online. But the idea is that if you have something running on a virtual machine on your NAS that you can run in Docker, you would save a ton of system resources simply running it in Docker. So when you first install Docker on your Synology NAS, you're going to see that it creates a Docker folder. Now this is where you want to keep all of your Docker containers folders. So we're going to get to it in a little bit, but basically when you create a Docker container, you mount specific folders. And what that does is it takes the Docker containers internal folders and it maps them to folders on your Synology NAS. So if you have to actually back up that container, what you're doing is you're backing up that Docker folder. And it basically contains all of your configuration for that specific container. So if you had to restore any of that data to a separate NAS or a separate Docker install, while you'd have to run through the process of creating that container again, as soon as you mount those folders, which are called volumes in Docker, as soon as you mount those volumes, you would have all of your saved information. So the first question that a lot of people have is, how do I back up my Docker containers? And the main way that you do it on a Synology NAS is just by backing up that folder. So after Docker is installed, you can open it up and you're going to see on the left hand side that there's a registry tab. And when you click that, it's going to initially search through the Docker Hub repository. So all the containers that you see will be from the Docker Hub repository. If you select settings, you can add or change the repository that you're connecting to. Now for the majority of people, you're just going to use Docker Hub, but if you have to add a different repository, this is where you'll do it. So after you search and find the image that you'd like to download, double click it and then select the image tab and it's going to download that image in that section. So in that image section, on the right hand side of every one of the images that you've downloaded, you'll see a little button that points to the Docker Hub repository. This is the documentation specific to the image that you just downloaded. This will basically hold all the information that you need to install this container. So it's a good idea to keep this up because we're going to need to reference it a little later. So when you're ready, double click the image for the container that you'd like to create and you're going to see it brings up a create container dialog. So the first thing that you'll always do is you give it a container name. And now you have two options here. You have execute container using high privilege and enable resource limitation. So there are specific situations where you will want to execute a container using high privilege. And that basically means allowing the container to run as your root user. Um, for the majority of situations, you don't want to actually use this. There are certain scenarios where it's a band-aid fix to just check this box off and if anything isn't working, it will start to work and you're basically just giving the container's user root permission and it has access to everything at that point so it goes from not working to working. The idea behind it is that you want to try and get your container to work without using high privilege. Now that's not to say that you're opening yourself up to any major security concerns by executing the container as a high privilege, but if it's something that you can avoid, you're probably better off doing that. For the resource limitation, this is just specifying a, uh, a CPU priority and a memory limit. As soon as you select advanced settings, this is where you're really going to configure the container. So the first two options, enable auto restart, this basically just means that if the container stops or if you restart your NAS, it will automatically restart. And then creating a shortcut on your desktop will just create a shortcut on your Synology NAS's uh, desktop inside of DSM. So the volume section is something that is very important to understand. So for this, you will need to reference the documentation that we opened earlier. So unfortunately, every documentation that you find for every container is going to be slightly different. In certain ones, you're going to be looking at a Docker Compose file. In certain ones, it will have a separate section for the volume information. But the idea is that you just have to see what volumes you can mount for this container. So using the example of PyHole, you will see a Docker Compose file here. And I'm going to get to Docker Compose in a little while, but a Docker Compose file basically just holds all the configuration for that container. 
In the Docker Compose file, you're going to see a volume section. So you'll see etc-pyhole, and it mounts to the internal container folder etc slash pyhole. So on the left-hand side, that is your host's folder location. So when we're creating a Docker container using the Synology GUI, that is going to be the folder that exists on your Synology NAS. On the right-hand side, you're going to see etc slash pyhole. Now that is the container's folder location. So the idea is that the information on the left-hand side will consistently change because it's going to point to the folder location that you create. On the right-hand side, that is the containers folder. You will always use the same. So you'll see etc slash pyhole and etc slash DNS mask. Those folders exist inside of the container. So with this in mind, we can go back to our Synology GUI and you can add a folder. So you always want to keep everything inside of the Docker folder, but what you can do is you can go in and create a folder named pyhole, and then you can create two subfolders, one called etc-pyhole and one called etc-dnsmask.d. Now individually, what you have to do is you have to add each of those folders and you have to mount it to the containers folder. So for etc-pyhole, you're going to mount it to the containers folder path of etc slash pyhole. You're going to do the same for etc-dnsmask.d, and then you're going to mount it to the folder location, the container folder location, etc slash dnsmask.d. Now, as soon as this container runs, when we run it later, what you'll see is if you open these folder locations on your Synology NAS, there will be files and folders and data inside of that. That data comes from the container. So basically, when the container runs, it maps all of those file locations and folder locations to your Synology NAS. Any of the changes that you make, any of the configuration changes, will exist in that folder. So that's why I say if you simply back up that Docker folder, you will be backing up all of your container's information because every time you create a container, you're going to create a new folder for that container. You're going to mount all of the container's volumes to that folder, and then you can simply back this up and all of your personal data for that container will be stored in that folder. So that's how you map specific folders. Now it gets slightly tricky because you would think that you can mount any folder you'd like, but that's not true. So from that documentation, you saw that the container was able to mount two different folders. If we wanted to mount a different folder, what we'd actually be mounting is the Synology NASA's folder to the folder in the container. So think of what we just did. We mounted it from the container to the Synology NAS. And the reason for that is because the container is written in that way. If you try and mount a different folder, it's not going to pull all of that folder's information onto your Synology NAS. So you have to kind of think of it in two different ways. So keeping in mind that you can do this for a folder or you can do it for a file, the best example that I could provide is if you want to update a specific file on the container by creating a file from your Synology NAS. So with PyHole, there's sometimes a bug with the DNS of the container itself. So all of that data is stored in the resolve.conf file inside of the PyHole container. So what you can do to change the contents of that file inside of the container is you can create a resolve.conf file on your Synology NAS, set it up to be exactly as you'd like it to be in the container, and then you mount that file to that internal path inside of the container. So hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a little tricky, but you're basically overwriting files inside of the container with files from your Synology NAS. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the network section. So by default, a bridge network will exist. And for a lot of containers, this is fine. You can also use the same network as the Docker host. That is fine as well. But in certain circumstances, you're going to find that you're going to run into certain port conflicts. And a port conflict is just when your container is trying to use the same port as your Synology NAS, because in this case, your Synology NAS is your host device. So a great example of that as well is PyHole. So PyHole has a management console, and that management console is a website, and it uses port 80 by default. Now Synology uses port 80 for various different things on the NAS itself. If you use the same network as the Docker host, and you try and access that web page, you're not going to be able to get to it. So you have two options. The first option is in the port settings, you can go in and you can map a different port, a different local port, to that container port of 80. So you're not going to change the container port, but you can go in and change the local port. And what that would mean is if you add, say, 8080 as the local port, when you navigate to the management console, 
you're going to navigate to your Synology NAS's IP address and port 8080 because you mapped port 8080 to the container port 80. So that's one option, but you have to be aware that there's potentially multiple port conflicts. So in this example, port 80 is a conflict, but so is port 53, that's the DNS port, and so is port 443. So in situations like this, you have the option of creating a Mac VLAN network interface. And you have to do that from the command line. And certain people might not be comfortable in the command line, but it's really just SSHing into your NAS, which I have a video for. If you aren't sure how to do that, I'll leave a pop-up for that now. And then finding your host network interface, and then you're going to create a Mac VLAN network off of that. So after you do that, what you would have is a Mac VLAN network interface that has a completely separate IP address and it will not have any port conflicts. So you'd be navigating to that Docker container using a separate IP address. And for that reason, it has its own port configuration. So you will not have any port conflicts. The one thing that you have to be aware of with this is that your host, meaning your Synology NAS, and your container cannot communicate using that Mac VLAN network interface's IP address. So what you have to do is whenever you're using a Mac VLAN network interface, if you require your host to be able to communicate with the container, you have to create a bridge network. And the bridge network is strictly used so that your host, meaning your Synology NAS, can communicate with your container. In this case, we're creating a Pi-hole container. So since Pi-hole is a DNS server, if you had to set the Synology NAS's DNS server, you would go in and you would add the bridge network's IP address and not the Mac VLAN network's IP address. This is strictly used for container and host communication. Everything else can use the Mac VLAN network interface's IP address. In the written instructions, I have exactly how you can create a Mac VLAN network interface and a bridge interface. So the last thing we're gonna look at inside of the creation of a container is the environment variables. So think of environment variables as a way of passing specific settings to your container. You can determine the type of environment variables that you can use by the documentation, and you can come here and add, change, or remove any of these if you'd like. So as soon as you're done setting up your container, you can apply all these changes and it will go ahead and start your container. Now, the first time the container runs, it's gonna take a few minutes to set everything up, but you should be able to access it shortly after. So we're gonna look at two more quick things as far as managing your Docker containers and a different way of creating Docker containers if you'd like. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is how you can access a container using the command line. So a lot of people aren't comfortable using the command line and that's why Synology's GUI is great because you really don't have to ever use the command line unless you have to create a Mac VLAN network interface to create a Docker container. However, if you want to access the container using the command line, you can. Now, keep in mind that any changes you make here when you go ahead and update your container will be lost. So it will automatically overwrite everything. And for that reason, if you have to modify a specific file in the container, you really wanna do it from the volume mapping. You wanna map a file to the internal containers file. But one of the common issues you'll run into is you'll have a hard time of finding the containers files or knowing the exact path of a container file. So what you can do is you can SSH into your Synology NAS and you have to make sure that your container started. If it's not started, you're not gonna be able to access it. But as soon as you're SSH'd in, you can run a command sudo docker container ls. This will pull up all of your containers that are currently running and you'll see a container ID there. So copy that container ID and then you're gonna run another command and you're gonna substitute in that container ID. And it's basically going to pull up that specific container via the command line. So this is really great, like I said earlier, if you want to mount a specific volume for a file but you aren't sure where the file exactly is. This will allow you to navigate through the container, find the file, and then you could go into Synology's GUI and you can mount that file location. So the last thing that we're gonna look at is Docker Compose. So for people who are used to running Docker on other operating systems, you're probably familiar with Docker Compose and you might not know that Docker Compose comes out of the box with Synology as soon as you install Docker. Now it's running a slightly older version of Docker Compose, so you might wanna go ahead and update it and if there's any interest to learn how you can update it, leave a comment and I'll do my best to create a tutorial for that. So we looked at a sample Docker Compose file a little earlier, and if I quickly pull it up again, what you'll see is that all of the configuration for this Docker container exists in this Docker Compose file. So you're gonna have the container name, the image that you have to use, the ports that it maps, your volumes, and your environment variables.
Now you can go ahead and you can modify these Docker and Compose files any way you'd like. You can really customize them a lot. But what's important to highlight is why you might want to use Docker Compose on your Synology NAS as opposed to the Docker GUI. So if you are not comfortable in the command line, just stick to the Docker GUI. You're going to get the same result, but you're probably going to be able to do it in a way that's a little more comfortable for you. But one of the benefits of using Docker Compose on your Synology NAS is you can create that Docker Compose file inside of that folder for your container. So we created a little earlier a pihole folder, and we created an etc-dnsmask.d folder, and an etc-pihole folder. You can create a configuration file here. It's going to be your Docker Compose configuration file, and it's going to store all of your container's information. To create that container, you would SSH into your Synology NAS, you would navigate to the folder location, and then you run a command to create that container. Now the big benefit of this is that you can see all of your configuration for that container exists in that Docker Compose file. So if you look at this from a future perspective, if you decide that you want to run all of your Docker containers on a separate operating system like Ubuntu or something, you can copy that entire Docker folder. It's going to have all of your volume information and it's also going to have all of your configuration files. So all you would do is you'd copy that entire Docker folder over to the Ubuntu operating system. You'd install Docker Compose, and then you'd bring up all of your containers one by one. And it would be as if all of your containers function the exact same way as they did on your Synology NAS. So the stark difference to that with the Synology GUI is that while you'll have all of your containers data, all of the volume mappings, you won't have the configuration saved. So on that new operating system, you would copy your Docker folder from your Synology NAS, but you then have to go through and either use Docker Compose or you can use Portainer to create all of your Docker containers. So on the surface, this might sound like it's a great idea and it's something that you want to do. But like I said earlier, if you're not comfortable in the command line, you're probably better off just using Synology's GUI. So in conclusion, this was a pretty long video that hopefully explained Docker and the Synology implementation in an easily understood way. But there's a lot more to Docker, probably some stuff that I even missed. But these are the basics that will hopefully guide you to creating your own containers. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.